at Maryland Stadium. Welcome to the Big Ten on ESPN. Presented by Xfinity. And the words of the day here in College Park, Maryland, two of them, reaffirmation, the first. The Hughes Nation smiles off a 10-win season, but don't ask them, orange you glad. And reclamation. Coming off a very tumultuous season, the question begs, will the Terrapin redemption rub off? It's the 37th meeting all time between number 21 Syracuse and Maryland, both coming in undefeated after impressive wins last week. Both teams' respective defenses pitching shutouts. Maryland winning the toss, deferring to the second half. Syracuse will receive. I'm Mark Jones alongside Dusty Dvorak, Olivia Decker down to the field, joining us in just a bit, and we are underway. Sean Riley back for the kick. Got a flag down on the play. Flag thrown all the way back at the 45-yard line. So we'll get the call and then get the Syracuse offense Offside. on. Kicking team, five-yard penalty, added to the end of the kick, first down. All right, first and ten, but in the big picture today, another chapter in the reclamation, the resurrection of a program, Maryland, that continues to commemorate their former teammate, number 79, Jordan McNair, doing it in so many significant ways. And Olivia Decker, almost an ethereal feel around this. Mark, that's the perfect word for it. As you mentioned, he wore number 79, and 79 is the amount of points that Maryland scored last week. It's also the amount of rushing yards that not one, but two running backs had. May seem like a coincidence, but not to this team who's been through so much. One player even telling us it was the most surreal experience of his life as he figured out what was going on. Yeah, they continue, Olivia, to honor McNair in the way they practice and play. That first pass incomplete intended for Sean Riley. Incomplete. They have T-shirts. They continue to do different things around the program. In the program, they still have his locker intact inside the Maryland practice facility in the locker room. Michael Loxley, the first-year head coach on the sidelines. They hand it off. Mo Neal gains a yard. Well, this late team, Mark, they think that their late teammate was with them to start this new chapter. So much emotion in our meetings yesterday with coaches and players really holding back tears as they told us this story. And this is especially personal to Mike Loxley, who lost a son just a year before. It's grieving still the loss of their teammate. Syracuse playing at a high tempo. They complete the pass to the edge, but it's going to be a punting situation as Mo Neal made the catch on the play. Fourth down coming up, Tino Ellis. We met with him yesterday with a nice open field tackle. It'll be three and punt for Syracuse on their first possession. There's a look at the first year head coach, Michael Loxley. Guy that's very familiar with a lot of these players, even though he just became their head coach. DJ Turner back there at his own 25 yard line for the Terps. Remember, he returned a punt for a touchdown last week against Howard. Calls for the fair catch at the 33-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 after the 34-yard punt. Mark Jones chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak. What's up, man? We too, we too. Man. Let's do it. Hey, we got a heck of a game here, right? Yes, we do. And when you look at what's happening on the sidelines with the respective programs, coaches, Babers, 10-3 and three last year. They're looking for more, looking to eat. Well, they're looking to show consistency, right? Show that this wasn't a one-year wonder. They weren't a flash in the pan. So it starts here today against a quality Big Ten opponent. And for Mike Loxley, his second chance as a head coach, yeah. back at a place he told us yesterday was his dream job. Big opportunity gets a top 25 team. Yeah, has a lot of local players on the roster and guys that he's been familiar with since elementary school almost. That's a three-yard gain by Anthony McFarland. There's a look at Dino Babers 
in his fourth season on the sidelines. I mentioned uh, the fact that they won 10 games last season, whether their first bowl game since 2013 at Syracuse, former head coach at Eastern Illinois, as well as Bowling Green. Little play action, Josh Jackson complete down the seam to Daryl Jones. And a touchdown saving tackle by Andre Sisco, but a big game by the Turks. And Maryland right back at the line of scrimmage. Little RPO here for Josh Jackson. The linebackers get sucked up. Middle of the field's wide open, and he hits Daryl Jones in stride for a big game. Jackson again. Boy, he fits it in another tight window to Carlos Carrier. Josh Jackson, the grad transfer from Virginia Tech, on fire here early. Running into the boundary. This is McFarland down to the seven-yard line. Brought down by Kendall Coleman. Boy, you talking about a couple of tight fits here for Jackson, Dusty. Absolutely. Go back to the big throw. Excellent job. Linebackers come up. They see run. Josh Jackson with the right read. Open throwing lanes for the quarterback, Josh Jackson, the transfer from Virginia Tech. Second and goal. Little pressure coming. Complete. Touchdown, Terps. Tyler Mabry. How's that for a reclamation and an opening drive? Where the Terps offense put the orange D on its heels collectively on the first couple of plays and they never seem to recover dusty seven nothing in a flat well mike loxy couldn't have asked for a better start his defense gives him a three and out and then it's grad transfer to grad transfer josh jackson finds tyler mabry fresh in from buffalo wide open in the flats and he puts it on the money the turfs up early in college park Matt Berry with a studio update. And on a college football Saturday, we have breaking news out of the NFL. The Raiders have released Antonio Brown. Just a day after finding him over $215,000, the Raiders have let go of Antonio Brown a day before the season starts. Mark and Dusty, back to you. All right, Matt, you know, Dusty, I think that by the end of the day, Antonio Brown is going to sign with the Toronto Argonauts and then get released by them, too. I mean, the CFL. I'm I mean, joking, but this is one of the most bizarre <laughs> stories I've ever seen. I mean, I just, no, I can't, yeah. you can't even keep up with it. I don't, I didn't wonder what is going on. Yeah. He is a one-man news cycle, and it continues to go at warp speed. Speaking of warp speed, though, what about what we saw from Maryland on that opening drive offensively? Oh, that was impressive, was it not? I mean, goodness gracious, you couldn't have asked for more. Josh Jackson, he looks comfortable. Mm -hmm. He looks in sync. This is Syracuse defense that was lights out a week ago on their heels to start this football game. Yeah. Again, could not have drawn it up any better for this Maryland Terpins team. He was 3-for-3 three three passing for 63 yards. It took five plays, 67 yards to put it into the end zone. And it's 7 nothing here with Syracuse in possession for the second time in this game. Tommy DeVito, the starting quarterback, hands it off and a nice gain. And a first down near the first down, actually, is Mo Neal. There's a look at Tommy DeVito, waited two years to finally get his chance as the starting quarterback. Syracuse really pushing the tempo. They worked all week in practice, talking with Mike Lynch, the offensive coordinator. They didn't feel that they went fast enough. And as I say that, they back off. But look for them to really put the pedal to the metal hill here today against this defense. DeVito was 17 of 35 last week in their win at Liberty. And we got a whistle and a flag on the far side of the field. Here's the call. Full start, offense. Following the penalty, first at 15, from the 30. Transfer is out today with the... 
Clemson transfer is out today with a groin injury. Sorry, guys, got a spotty mic. All right, thanks a lot, Olivia. We'll uh, clean that up. Shaq Smith, if you didn't hear the entire report from Olivia, the transfer from Clemson out with an injury. Deion Jones defending on that last play. Second down coming up. Yeah, the grad transfers have really helped out Mike Loxley. Both their outside backers, Shaq Smith from Clemson, also Keandre Jones from Ohio State, both very active in the opener a week ago against Howard. It'll be Bryce Brand, 27, who will step in and try to get that pass rush for this defense. Second down to Vito, flushed out of the pocket. Looking to get rid of it, and wisely yeah. does out near midfield. He was outside of the pocket. The ball obviously beyond the line of scrimmage. Good pressure coming from Bryce Brand, number 27, who is one of those guys that's going to get a few more reps now that Shaq Smith isn't available today. Well, this was a problem. This was a problem a week ago. Rut protecting. Huge problem. Bryce Brand beats 52. Veterello, who has moved over from right tackle to left tackle. Their starting center got hurt last week. Sam Heckel. Aaron Service moves over. So it's a makeshift offensive line right now for Syracuse. Behind the chains at third and 15. DeVito stepping up. Eludes the rush. Fumbled it. Scooped up by the Terps at the 33. And the first turnover of the game. Ely. Jones made the hit, and Ely scooped up the loose ball. I mean, this rush is just too much. We're going to get off pressure off each edge and in the middle, and as DeVito steps up, it's an excellent job by Jones to retrace, watch him retrace, and then get the ball out. Hack it out with that right hand, and it's Ely, Johnny on the spot to pick it up. And Maryland in prime position after the takeaway. See if they take a shot here on the first play after the turnover from the 33. A three receiver formation. It's going to be McFarland. And McFarland makes it down to the 28 yard line. Williams, Lakeem Williams making the stop on the gain of three. But John Hoke's defense coming up with a nice play there for the Terps. 14th straight game forcing a turnover. That's one of the longest streaks. Second and seven, flags down. Full start, offense number 71, five yard penalty, second down. UFC is back on ESPN Plus today. Lightweight champ Habib defending his title against Poirier. Stream that fight live at 2 p.m. with ESPN Plus. Habib was the first Russian to win the UFC title. Take a beat. Equally as good on the ground game as well as his boxing skills. Wide open. The catch made by DJ Turner. And a first down again for Maryland. Boy, nobody close to him. Trill Williams and Nickel gets lost in coverage. And an outstanding job by Josh Jackson on the move to his right, finding his target and delivering it. And then DJ Turner picking up some yards after the catch. Maryland offense really moving the football at a high clip. 24 yard gain, Dusty on that play. Just under 10 minutes to go. Here in the first quarter, Maryland threatening again already. Demas in motion. Jackson throws it away wisely. Well, we started talking about Josh Jackson, and we got a. Oh, Josh Jackson took a shot yeah. there. It was Kendall Coleman who comes in, gets a big hit on him. You saw him grab. His left forearm. Josh Jackson, the grad transfer from Virginia Tech. We saw him complete that pass to DJ Turner a moment ago. As you see him holding that arm still, Dusty. Big shot from Kendall Coleman. Two sacks a week ago. Something to monitor and keep an eye on. Second and goal. <laughs> McFarlane between the tackles down to the two yard line. Tackled by Cisco, an eight yard gain, third down, and goal here for the Terps. Nice run inside there by Anthony McFarland. Outstanding, powerful back. See what they do here on third and goal. Demas is their tall, lanky receiver, number seven. Watch 81 Mabry. 
McFarlane in the backfield. He gets the call. Cuts it back. Touchdown. Anthony McFarland with his third rushing touchdown took it this season and the seventh of his career and they convert off the turnover they force the fumble and get a touchdown out of it Maryland striking with Swift lethality here early. 9-0-1 to play in the first quarter. Already up a couple of touchdowns. McFarland coming off a great freshman campaign. Ready to eat again. Eat a little more. Back after this. ESPN College Football is presented by Xfinity. Get the ultimate in-home Wi-Fi experience with Xfinity X-Fi. And in part by Mazda. Feel alive. Leakin is backcourt running mate, backfield running mate, Anthony McFarland, both squatting 500 pounds in the same day. Dust any time that thing's that bar's bending at both ends, it's a lot of weight. Making it look easy. Multiple <laughs> reps. That wasn't a one rep max. What, what was your squat? I, man, at your on. best. In college. In college? In college. I, seven, seven and change. Okay. We went over seven. All right. Might have hit 800 at one point. Okay. Anthony McFarland, though, is a powerful runner. You saw the excellent vision there. Over 1,000 yards last year as a freshman. Dynamic playmaker. Tell you what, Maryland off to a great start here. This is Sean Riley, a dangerous kick return man. There's a flag down at the 32 yard line. And that Maryland special teams unit covering that kick extremely well. See a bunch of flags already in this football game. They're on the return, holding, receiving team number 42. 10-yard penalty, first down. Let's go back to the studio. Okay, guys, a couple of updates from around the Big Ten. Iowa and Rutgers. Watch the pass by Nate Stanley. Perfect 58-yard touchdown to Amir Smith. Iowa up early 7-0. More Big Ten. The Buckeyes in Cincinnati. Justin Fields picking up where he left off last week. Scampers in for a touchdown of his own. That over on ABC. 7-0 early Ohio State. Guys, back to you. All right, Matt. Out of the shotgun. DeVito. An empty formation. Five receivers to work with. They didn't have much chemistry last week. The pass complete this time to Sean Riley. Gains about seven on the play. They're going to have to get the ball out quick. This offensive line of Syracuse is not being able to hold up against this Maryland front. Quick game, screens, perimeter throws, anything to help out this offensive line and help get the young quarterback, Tommy DeVito, some confidence and into a rhythm. Maryland has really done a great job early in football games on scoring its opponents by a huge margin. Second down and three, DeVito to set. Fires complete. And a Syracuse first down. Back again to Sean Riley. Well, there's been so much talk with the calling of RPOs in college football and the blocking downfield by offensive linemen. And that pocket becomes an interesting area. There's a look at the shaded area, the pocket with respect to passing the football as well. Once you're outside it, that time he gets rid of it. Out of bounds. You're still inside the pocket. That pocket extending five yards to either side of the football. Trying to help determine whether a pass is intentional grounding or not. There you see the shaded area. Excellent visual from our guys at ESPN to give the people at home an idea of where that pocket is. And the ball's on the ground. Abdul Adams put it on the ground. They've already turned it over once. 
And Syracuse is going to retain possession. Four yard gain on the play. Big hit coming there by 14 Deion Jones. Helmet shoulder on the football. It's coming out. Fortunate to get that ball back. Now third and long. Can they protect? DeVito has time. Downfield. What a catch! Wow, Tristan Jackson, the transfer from Michigan State, was working against Marcus Lewis and came up with a circus grab. And Syracuse back up at the line of scrimmage after the 33-yard game. Nice job by Tommy DeVito climbing in the pocket and firing a strike, and his receiver pays it off with a great catch. Hands it off this time to Abdul Adams. And Adams picks up about three and a half on the play. One more look at that great catch, Dusty. Working out of the slot, one-on-one -on -one coverage, pass thrown slightly behind him, excellent adjustment in the air, gets the foot in bounds and shows he has possession. Excellent concentration in the transfer from Michigan State, Tristan Jackson. And as you've noticed, we've said that word yeah. transfer <laughs> quite a bit today. We can get to that more later, but very in vogue in today's college football. Yeah, both these programs uh, in touch with that transfer portal a bit. Blitz, DeVito wide open at the 10, and a first down for Syracuse on the catch by Taj Harris. Good blitz pickup by DeVito. And a 29-yard gain. DeVito put plenty of air underneath the football. Another quality adjustment in the air by Taj Harris. Busted coverage there by Antoine Brooks. On first and goal, they hand it off to Mo Neal. Neal had a touchdown last week. Tommy DeVito, as the pressure's coming, kind of off his back foot, just puts plenty of air underneath it. No one around, Taj Harris. Safety couldn't get over the top. Harris, one of those wide receivers for the Orange that missed some time in training camp. There were several of them that uh, had to sit out because of various injuries, slowing down their progression. DeVito on the waggle action. And he's going to slide back at the eight yard line, and they're going to lose a few yards. Jordan Mosley standing his ground and moving in. So it'll be third down and goal for Syracuse. Well, stay tuned after the game for the U.S. Open Women's Championship match. Serena looking for elusive 24th major title against Bianca Andreescu out of Canada, attempting her first win. Those two met up in Canada at a tournament recently, and Serena had to quit because of an injury. Third down and goal. Tenth play of the drive. DeVito into the end zone. Touchdown, Orange. Jackson with the catch. Well, Tristan Jackson was just uncovered. Really nice job right there by the quarterback, Tommy DeVito, recognizing it and fires a bullet before Ely, the linebacker, can get over in coverage. He's wide open. Ely's got to bump out and reduce some of that space there. That's quality recognition by Tommy DeVito. Really stepped up on that, on that drive, making some big plays down the field. They just turned him loose, Dusty. <laughs> Extra point good, 14-7. There's a look at the transfer from Michigan State. He remembers his first visit with Dino Babers. Babers said, are you fast? Jackson said, heck yeah, coach. Coach said, let's go catch some balls then. He caught that one. Back after this. Studio update, an Army doing what Army does. Ten play drive, all runs. Sandon McCoy up the gut. Right now, Army up on Michigan. 7-0. All right, and back to College Park, Maryland. Fireworks early in this football game. A couple of turnovers and three touchdowns already on the board, and we haven't even finished the first 15 minutes of play. This Saturday afternoon, which presents a little bit of an anomaly on the sidelines on the return leak. 
Out close to the 30. One more look at that touchdown. What was the key here, Dusty? This is good quarterbacking by Tommy DeVito. He gets the matchup he wants. He's got a linebacker on a wide receiver, right? Well, watch his vision. He's going to start here and then work his way back to his receiver. He knows where he wants to go the whole time, but the head starts there, gets back. That backer takes one step inside, and it's too late. He can't get back and recover, and an easy touchdown pass for Syracuse. Showing some of the talent that had him one of the Elite 11 quarterbacks in the country coming out of high school. Talked about this game uh, presenting a nice, unique bit of circumstance on the sidelines with the respective head coaches. This is Javon Leak out beyond the 30 yard line, picked up six. Lakeem Williams making the tackle on the play. Mike Loxley, the first year head coach from Maryland, a native of Southwest D.C. And you get the feeling in speaking with him that there's not a player in elementary school, middle school, or high school in the area that he doesn't know. Jackson back to pass and overthrows Dante Demas. It'll be third down, about four to go. Good pressure up front by Alton Robinson. Here's a look at Loxley, the former head coach at New Mexico and last year the offensive coordinator for Nick Saban in Alabama and Dino Babers former head coach at Eastern Illinois where his first year they thought he finished last he ended up winning the conference a pass complete near the 35 close to the first down a Conquo picks up five on the play and he gets the first just under four minutes to go in the first quarter Oconco was sitting right down the south part of the zone, right over the middle of the football. And Alton Robinson, 94, barreling down the yep. middle of that line. Watch out for 94 55 all day. One of the best pass rushing duos in all of college football. Starting to get closer and closer to Josh Jackson. Two African American head coaches on the sidelines, battling wins today. Nice gain that time by Leak. And it's time for today's Aflac trivia question, folks. We saw Babers and Aflac. Mike Loxley. When was the first NCAA D1 football game between two African American head coaches? I kind of got the good one. <laughs> he, got, he got the code on that. McFarland trying to get to the edge, pushed out of bounds, a couple of yards shy of the first down, picked up two. When we talked to Dino Babers this week on the call, he told us he told us the answer. Yeah. He was he remembers it vividly. We'll let you at home ruminate on that for a little bit. I was a member of the Chicago Bears. It was the first ever Super Bowl mm. coached by two African American head coaches, right. Tony Dungy and my coach Levy Smith. Third down and two. McFarland, well, we saw him squatting 500 pounds a little bit earlier, Dusty. It takes a little bit of leg drive to make those tough yards, Power right? Powerful runner and Anthony McFarland. Those legs keep churning, churning. He's met right at the line of scrimmage, but you're not going to deny him. Small, low center of gravity. Man, he runs tough. Getting a good look at these Maryland starters because last week against Howard, we only saw them for the first half in that 79 0 blowout. Josh Jackson. With a sweet run here and wisely stepping out of bounds. Picks up another first down at about the 38 yard line of Syracuse. Picks up 14 on the play. McKinney with a good block. Design quarterback draw. 68 is going to get the key block on the linebacker. Boom. And then an excellent cut by Josh Jackson off of it. And then downfield blocking Deontay Jones with another block as well. Jackson with a rare incomplete class intended for. DJ Turner. Here's a look at our Aflac trivia question. The first NCAA Division I game between two African American head coaches, September 24th, 88. Cleve Bryant and Wayne Nunnally. Ohio University and UNLV. Jackson, little RPO action complete to Daryl Jones, and Maryland with another first down near the 20. Josh Jackson doing an outstanding job so far in the run pass option game, making the proper reads and finding his targets, whether it be down the field or there out in the flats.
finds Daryl Jones and a nice pickup after the catch. From the 20. Jackson over the middle. Caught. And inside the five yard line, it'll be first and goal. Okonkwo reached behind to make that grab. A 17 yard game. First and goal, Maryland. And they're moving quick. Jackson hands it off to Leak. Got to the edge. Touchdown, Maryland. We thought this would be a Syracuse team that was led by their defense. They're getting shredded so far here in the first quarter. The left side of the offensive line doing a nice job. Oconco with the key block. And if you allow Leak to get to the perimeter, he's got dynamic speed as he slips into the end zone. This Terrapin offense making it look easy so wow. far, Jonesy. Surprisingly so, Dusty. Leak with his first rushing touchdown of the season, the 10th of his career. As Maryland's offense moves it down the field again with incredible efficiency. Putting 21 points on the board here already in the first quarter with 46 seconds to go. Well, today it's a can't miss double header on ABC. First number 12, Texas A&M taking on number one Clemson 3:30. Then number six LSU heads to the 40 acres to face number nine Texas. Stream both games live on the ESPN app. Remember this summer, A&M quarterback Kellen Mond declared he's quote the best quarterback in the SEC. Can't let your mouth write a check. Your body can't cash, Dusty. No doubt about that. <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm thinking about. Mike Loxley and his offensive prowess, a winner of the Brewers Award last year, running that Alabama offense. And when you, we talked with Scotty Montgomery yesterday, who comes in from Duke, and Mike Loxley tells us he's the smartest man in the room. And when you listen to Scotty Montgomery talk about Mike Loxley and what he's taught him about the RPO game and just the communication, the collaboration they've been able to have and put together this offense, it's been unbelievably impressive so far through about five quarters the, the, the type of offense that they've been able to implement. And he talks about uh, having the right structure on his coaching staff, hiring the right people and doing it methodically, doing your due diligence and getting some experienced voices on the staff. And how they practice another emphasis they wanted to get right when he got here. Kick goes out of the end zone. Let's check back in with Matt in the studio. All right, guys, here's where Michigan is against Army. Down 7-0 early. Fourth down, Harbaugh calls a fake punt, and it works. After a pass interference call after the fake punt, it sets up a Zach Charbonnet touchdown, his first touchdown on the season. Army has just turned the ball over. Michigan has it again. Right now we're tied at 7. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. And back here, first down and 10 for Syracuse from its own 25-yard line. Well, Syracuse down 21 to 7. Remember, they've got a big one next week against Clemson. Nice run by Mo Neal for a first down. Dusty, I'm not going to say that they're overlooking Maryland because their head coach, Dino Babers, rang the alarm with the 70 on points Maryland had, but what do you make of this sluggish start so far? I think Maryland's offense is just in sync. And okay. Syracuse so far just can't come up with stops. They're getting no, not enough pressure on Josh Jackson. Linebackers are getting sucked up with the RPO play action game. And I just think Maryland really is being extremely efficient offensively. Double pass. Little double pass here. Incomplete. They tried to go downfield to Aaron Hackett. Taj Harris had his pass go a little bit long. So Dino Babers uh, dialing up a little trickery there. Trying to pull out all the tricks. Down below, we'll look down here at the bottom of your screen. Double pass. Seemed like Hackett couldn't come off the block. He's trying to release. It's just too late. And the pass is overthrown. Safety coming over the top just a little bit late. Second down and 10. 11 seconds to go here in the first quarter. They're going to run it, but nowhere to go. Neil. Neil had 89 yards rushing last week. 
Although with Timmy making the stop on the play and that's going to be the end of the first 15 minutes. Under the sun here at Maryland Stadium a very auspicious beginning. And the reclamation continues for the big M which right now means magnificent and Maryland back for the second quarter right after this. Pastor Babers ready to do a little altar call. A fiery impassioned speech is what he's known for. And his team didn't come up with the right type of fire and play that time. Coming up short on third and long. Eight yard gain to Mo Neal. They'll have to punt again here, Dusty. Master motivator. He's going to have to bring it for this team because they have been sleepwalking so far. It's been all Maryland to this point. Quality stop there on third down, tackling Mo Neal in the open field to force another Syracuse punt. Turner back for this punt, calls for the fair catch at the 17 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for Josh Jackson. Dino's got a great touch with his players, doesn't he? Absolutely, man. He's He's got a great touch with everybody. Very engaging personality, likes to have fun. Right now, he's trying to stay positive with his players, trying to get them going. But really, it's his defense. His defense that he spoke so highly of, going to have to find a way to get a stop here. Got a new quarterback in for Maryland, number three, Tyrell Pigram. Played a bunch last year, started several games. He's actually won a couple of games as the starter for Maryland. Getting a look here at the start of the second quarter for the Terps. Pigram going to pick up close to three. Brought down by Andre Sisco and Lakeem Williams. Maryland with a decided edge in total yards in the first quarter. At the end of one, Maryland 179 yards, Jones. And that number continues to loom large. And Tyrell Pigram, a dynamic playmaker, they had to be able to get the ball in his hand. Nice run up the middle between the tackles off the fake. Sets up a long, a short third down and two. Evan Foster making the tackle from a safety position for Syracuse. And now Pigram comes out. Josh Jackson, the grad transfer from Virginia Tech, who was almost perfect in the first 15 minutes back in the football game. Maryland scored on its first three drives of the ball game, leading 21-7. Jackson, a dart complete for the first down at the 32 to the transfer, Tyler Mabry. Let's talk more about Josh Jackson. He missed the early part of camp because he was finishing up his degree at Virginia Tech. A couple of years ago, got hurt early, came back. Last year, had a broken leg in game four and completed his degree work at Virginia Tech made the call and got here on campus at Maryland. Off the fake, kept it himself. Good straight arm and is tackled by Andrew Armstrong, Olivia. And when Josh Jackson got here with all his accolades, teammates were telling us he was so humble. No one cared what he did before. He didn't care what he'd done before. And his football IQ was so high. He worked so hard this summer. And he took some time to get comfortable in the offense, but having a good week one was huge for his confidence. Yeah, he um, you mentioned the humility, Olivia. It's been a big key in his success with his teammates. Pass complete over the middle to Dante Demas. He's their dangerous target. Six foot four, 14 yards on the game. Syracuse brought a blitz right there. Middle of the field was wide open and a perfect strike to Demas on the slant. Boy, when you can plug a guy in like Jackson at quarterback, there's so many things for the offense. That's McFarland in the running game. Picks up about eight. Brought down by Williams. Going to bring the backers, see him walk up here. Middle of the field is going to be wide open. Worked out for Maryland. Jackson 
Well, it looked like the ball almost squirted out of his hands. He overthrew it by that much. Intended for Dante Demas. Talked about his leadership, and Olivia mentioned Jackson's humility. Said that he's focused on what he can do for this team and not what he's done in the past at Virginia Tech, and that's really endeared him to the rest of his teammates. Michael Loxley, the head coach, actually knows Jackson's dad, Fred, as a coach up in Michigan, had a good relationship with him. McFarland trying to get to the edge, squares those shoulders, and picks up the first down just inside the 40-yard line at the 39. Melifonwu pushed him out of bounds, but not after he picked up six, Dusty. melifonwu has got to keep contained. There was nowhere to go inside. I love the vision there from Anthony McFarland. He bounces it outside, and it's a foot race, and he's going to win easily to pick up the first down and some. I love the running style of Anthony McFarland, the power, the speed, the vision, and a little bit of everything. Right now, Tavon Fleet Davis checked into the ball game. The pass tipped at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Tyler Mabry was the intended receiver. It'll set up a second down and 10. You know, you talk about Josh Jackson, what a get that is. A guy who won as many games as he did at Virginia Tech. But how about Tyler Mabry? He was a first team all Mac guy at tight end, can block, can pack, can catch the football. Great weapon for this offense. And there he is, but out of bounds that time, Dusty. Mabry caught it, but wasn't even close. Do you like the whole grad transfer slash? Um, transfer portal slash waiver wire free agency whatever you want to call it. Well, there's so much in that right grad transfer I love right because what do we want to promote in collegiate athletics get your degree sure that's what it's supposed to be about if you get your degree you should be able to have options and really I like the thought of the transfer portal it gives you know young men options to go other places but as we talked with coaches yesterday from roster management and other issues there are unintended consequences yeah. that have come with it. it's a tricky Jackson Sacked back at the 46-yard line. The heat got to him that time. And Syracuse comes up with a big play to take them out of field goal range, too. Syracuse with their ninth sack of the season. Excellent job there by the pass rush. You see the push come. 85, able to get home. Josh Black. Formerly a defensive end, bulked up, moved inside. Two sacks a week ago, yeah. three already on the early season. You like it when those inside guys get those sacks and pressures, huh? Oh, I love it when those inside <laughs> guys get the sacks and pressures. You know that. Fair catch called at the 15 by Sean Riley. Where it'll be first and 10 after the 31 yard punt. Tommy DeVito and the Syracuse offense looking at a 14 point deficit. And they're still doing it for their teammates. Honoring him in the way that they practice, the way they work, and the way that they play. Welcome back to Maryland Stadium. Terrapins lead 21 to 7. As you can see on your screen, that's the Jordan McNair tree. The late Terrapin player who died last June. The team has been honoring him in many ways, including that tree right outside of the football facility. Yeah, it's great to see Olivia the way that this team um, has been honoring him and uh, hold him still dear to their hearts. Uh, the McNair family as well. Coach Loxley with a good relationship with Jordan's father. Second down and three. DeVito eluding harm. And picked off at the 32. Right into the arms of Jordan Mosley. A puzzling throw by DeVito. Well, Tommy DeVito does an excellent job stepping up in the pocket, avoiding the pressure from Antoine Brooks, who comes in on a blitz, and then inexcusably throws it to See, we're going to have pressure come off the edge right here. And he's going to step up. He's going to avoid. Does a nice job. And he tries to find his outlet receiver. Who would run out of bounds. Who had stopped running his route. Looks like Nikeem Johnson just gave up on the play. And DeVito tries to force a ball where it had no business going. That was Maryland's first interception of the season. Jackson throws it out of bounds. In 
incomplete. Robinson with the good pressure up front. Last season, Maryland at 18 interceptions. That was fifth in the football bowl subdivision. Ball Second and ten. Defense for Maryland getting after it again. Pressure forces a poor decision by Tommy DeVito. And he's got to learn to eat that. He had a couple of picks last week that one of them very similar. McFarland made a nice cut. Walks into the end zone. Room service. The Terps now with 14 points off turnovers. And this cut put the foot in the ground and forget about it. <laughs> what a run there by Anthony McFarland, who continues to impress. Put that right foot in the ground, get vertical, and take it to the house. Anthony McFarland, the second touchdown of the day. Well, Anthony McFarland had a heck of a freshman season for going over 1,000 yards. What an encore here today at home. Second touchdown so far of the day. Put those 500 pound squats to use. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Progressive Insurance, handing off big savings to you. And Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch, switching makes it easy to save. Jim Henson. Some of the other uh, turf grads here, the creator of uh, the Muppets. Pretty impressive stuff. What about the Google co founder, Sergey Brin? Oh. Seinfeld creator was? Don't know. Larry David? Come on. Oh, Larry David. My bad. Didn't watch a lot of Seinfeld. Our very own SVP? John Lucas, Lenny Elmore at ESPN as well. Let's go back to the studio in Arizona State's Matt Berry. There you go, doing the alma maters. Good story developing in Columbia, South Carolina. Ryan Helensky, the brother of the late Tyler Helensky, getting his first start as a true freshman for the Gamecocks, finds Brian Edwards over the middle. 15 of 17, 139 yards. Gamecocks big. Right now, Army and Michigan tied at seven, and J.K. Dobbins just scored for the Buckeyes. They're up 14-0 over Cincinnati. Guys? Oh. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. And uh, speaking of uh, Terp grads, Tim Brandt, former linebacker, local sports anchor here in the area, local legend over the years, a guy that I cut my teeth with in the business. Great player here in Maryland back in the day. Mo Neal on the run. Latez Rogers picks up six on the play. Find it interesting, Maryland with a 28-7 lead, and uh, Matthew McConaughey, uh, had the right team picked so far, right? Sounds like everyone else was on the Q <laughs> side. It's been an impressive performance so far for Maryland. Important drive for Syracuse. O'Neal again picks up the first down. Ely making the tackle on the play. It's going to be actually close to a first down. Not going to give it to him quite yet. Very least give that defense a rest. They've been on their heels yeah. this entire first half. Third and inches. And this time, O'Neal picks it up. Mosley making the tackle. UFC back on ESPN Plus. Today, lightweight champ Abib defending his title against Poirier. Stream that fight live at 2 p.m. with ESPN Plus. Of course, Abib defeated Conor McGregor in four rounds back in August 2018. He was a part of that bizarre scene going over the cage after one of his matches. Downfield and caught by Christian Jackson. And a big play for the Orange. Well, that's a dime by Tommy DeVito. Plenty of air underneath the football. Puts it out in front of his wide receiver where he runs underneath it. And excellent separation by Jackson as he gets past Ellis out on the outside. That's a dime. Couldn't have placed it any better. Well done by Tommy DeVito. 39-yard gain. This is Neal. And Neal pushed out of bounds. Right around the 15-yard line. Another one of those transfers, Tristan Jackson on that previous catch, picked up 29, number 86. 
from a all-conference high school basketball player back in the day, back in Bloomfield, Michigan. DeVito into the end zone, open! Touchdown, Syracuse! What a way to make a statement coming back. Riley got in behind Mosley. I really like this route combination here. As you're going to see Riley working out of the slot, just going to run a wheel route to the outside. They bring pressure off the edge. Perfect call and execution by the Syracuse offense. Oh, and they miss the extra point. Andre Schmidt shanks that off the upright. Syracuse able to rest some of the momentum back on that impressive drive. Little pick route there on the outside. Free Sean Riley up. Syracuse with a much needed touchdown. Can they get a stop? Well, Syracuse getting a score a moment ago on a nice catch by Sean Riley on a dime drop by Tommy DeVito. Back deep, it'll come out first down and 10 from the 25. And how about the head coach coming over and talking to him, getting his confidence up. Remember he threw that interception just a series before, coming over, having a nice conversation with him. I love the play design here by Mike Lynch. Little pick route. They're going to bring nickel pressure off the edge. Safety's going to try to roll over. It'll be Taj Harris that's going to come on the slant, pick enough of that safety to where he can't run with Sean Riley on the wheel. And the execution is flawless from Tommy DeVito. And he sat over and talked to him before the series and the first to greet him as he hits the sideline, trying to continue to instill confidence in his young quarterback. Babers with some great coaching mentors. This is Lee mm -hmm. picking up about five. You look at the guys that he's worked with in the past. June Jones, legendary Dick Tomey, Homer Smith back in the day and uh, passing on some of that knowledge to his quarterback Tommy DeVito seven minutes to go in the first half pass complete that's Daryl Jones and Jones pushed out of bounds by Andre Cisco picking up a first down well Jones having a nice afternoon so far today you, you know with a name like Jones you know he can ball right yeah, That's they're making automatic. fun of him, though, because he thought he was the fastest guy on the team. <laughs> he said he got walked down last week against Howard. That did not go unnoticed in the wide receiver room. Yeah, D.J. Turner said, you're no longer in consideration for fastest man on the roster. On the run, Leak breaking a tackle, leaking into the secondary. And Frederick finally making the stop. Anthony, Picked up 16. Anthony McFarlane will wow you, but Chris Leak will slash her. Puts his hand and foot in the ground as well. That excellent speed and lowering the shoulder to finish the run. He led Maryland last year in rushing touchdowns. Jackson. Incomplete. No flag on the play. Defended by Antoine Cordy. Broken up. It was intended for Terrell Jones again. Antoine Cordy definitely was being physical outside. But watching this game to this point, they've really allowed the defensive backs to, to be physical with these wide receivers. So I think that's consistent with the way they've called the game to this point. You're trying to tell me that wasn't interference then. I'm trying to tell you I agree with the call or the <laughs> no call I should say. <laughs> okay. This is McFarlane running it into the boundary brought down just inside the 40 yard line picked up five man this guy Anthony McFarlane has shown some brilliance here this afternoon coming off a thousand yard rushing season last year setting a school freshman rushing record and look at the numbers already here today 62 yards and a couple of touchdowns out of one of those local players I'll tell you what Michael Loxley has a chance to put the DMV on lockdown recruiting wise complete over the middle to a conquo still on his feet and finally out of bounds at the 15 yard line first down and 10 Maryland again a 23-yard pickup. 
Well, Syracuse going to try to bring a blitz here. Both backers, nobody is in the middle of the field. And Oconquo wide open with plenty of grass in front. Boy, those tight ends, Mabry and Oconquo, very much involved today. Doing a nice job. Jackson fires incomplete at the eight yard line earlier I said that coach Loxley had a chance to put the DMV on lockdown recruiting wise DMV meaning the DC Maryland Virginia area for those of you that don't already know what was crazy when talking to different players yesterday talking with Tino Ellis talking with DJ Turner Mike Loxley's the one that offered both of those guys yes. his previous stint here as good a recruiter as you'll find yes. in this area. Jackson on the field, open, touchdown Maryland, Carrier. Tell you what, this offense of Maryland is combustible. The stellar day continues for Josh Jackson. He's under pressure. Alton Robinson gets a good rush. He steps up. Fires a strike once again down the field to carry him. You know what's happening right now at Howard University? They're saying, see, <laughs> wasn't just us. <laughs> exactly. Putting on a clinic here offensively. Exactly, Dusty. 35 on the board already against Syracuse. The two of the best pass rushers in the ACC, but getting shredded right now, eviscerated. Let's take a look at today's uh, scenery around campus. And today's Wendy's weekend watch at 3.30 on ABC number 12, Texas A&M, heading to Death Valley to take on number one, Clemson. And then number six, LSU, taking on number nine, Texas, who do you like in those two games? You going chalk on me here? Or I like where's Cle the upset a little? I like Clemson. Okay, uh, but I think a and going to keep it closer than what a lot of people think. I think a and a quality team. The game in Austin, I'm going to lean LSU, but I think that's going to be a heck of a football game. Very intriguing. Let's check in with the studio and Matt. Guys, Armies run 31 ball plays, all of them on the ground, and they've just taken a 14-7 lead over Michigan at the Big House just about halftime. And coming up 4 p.m. Eastern, Serena trying to pass Margaret Court for most major championship titles all time. U.S. Open Finals coming up 4 p.m. on ESPN. All right, Matt, that's going to be a great match. Awesome to watch Serena and how dominant she's been throughout her U.S. Open watch so far. One of the greatest in crowd fleets, period. Totally agree. Regardless of gender. First down and 10, under five minutes to go. Dusty, we came into Time the out. game. Syracuse. Time out on the field. Syracuse talking about uh, Syracuse. Might they be looking ahead a little bit to next week in the big game against Clemson, who you'll see on ABC today against uh, uh, Texas A&M. But uh, this, this is not about looking ahead is it I don't think this has anything to do with looking ahead no I mean I think Maryland had their full attention based off of a 79-0 win but let's be real I mean Syracuse has played Clemson extremely well the last two seasons yeah we go back to a couple of years ago and what a scene it was Bryant hurled to the ground and Bryant needs some help to walk off the field Wide open. Nobody's going to catch him. It's an easy touchdown for Syracuse. The upset pulled by the Orange. They defeat Clemson 27 to 24. Well, sometimes in sports, Dusty, it's about staying present. And the present right now has Syracuse down by 22 points against Maryland and a sack by that Maryland front good pressure by Keandre Jones the Ohio State transfer he beats Veterello out of his stance 
I mean, this is a speed rush. Watch him dip. Watch him dip around the edge. Never had a chance. We talked about this offensive line being shuffled around. Veterello's used to playing right tackle, now playing left. Vito on the play fake. Gets it out to Moneal, and Moneal brought down at the 33-yard line. Let's go back to Keandre Jones, number four, close to that tackle again. But on the previous play, made the tackle. He's one of those guys, a transfer from Ohio State. He actually committed to Maryland. There he is in Michael Loxley's earlier stint here and decided to transfer back here when Loxley got the job. The gain by Jarvion Howard picked up a yard on the play. Another stop for this Maryland defense. Going to force a punt and give that offense the football back for another shot to put up more points. See Dino Babers, he's just kind of miffed over there. Yeah. The struggles his offense has had now for two straight weeks. John Hope, the defensive coordinator of Maryland, former defensive coach at the Bears. Whenever I played there, it was great catching up with Coach Hope yesterday. Tell he's excited to be back in college football. And See, I was impressed. He said you were a good practice guy. What'd you think? I, I, I thought you were one of those, you know. Come on, man. <laughs> practice? Just save it for the game. Talking about know? practice? <laughs> Ball out of bounds at about 15-yard line. Let's go back to the studio. Matt? That's coming up in the Lexus Halftime Report. Michigan getting beat at home against Army. We'll have updates to that. Plus, Ohio State having their way with Cincinnati. And who's destined for a bounce back in week two after week one? Jess Palmer, Joey Galloway. Join me coming up in the Lexus Halftime Report. All right, Maryland with a chance to move this ball down the field again. Plenty of time. 3.05 to go. It's full complement of three timeouts remaining and a chance to put some more points on the board. Josh Jackson has been incredibly efficient here in the first half of play. 12 of 21 passing, almost 200 yards in all, and a couple of touchdowns. He didn't play beyond the second quarter last week. That pass incomplete for Jones. But so we know Scotty Montgomery, the offensive coordinator, calls the plays. But Coach Locks recommends in between series and is very active in the game plan. Guys, he told us yesterday it gives him something to live for, something to work for. Yeah, he stays very connected, Olivia, <laughs> to the happenings on both sides of the ball and uh, likes to have a lot of times the entire staff come in dusty and watch film. I thought that was remarkable when I heard Scotty Montgomery talk about that. And that's some of the things that Coach Loxley wisely has taken from Nick Saban. Part of the process took some different things that he learned while he was there at Alabama for three years. But yeah, offensive and defensive staffs watch all the tape together. I don't think I've seen that before anywhere in college football. A little pressure coming off the edge. Jackson gets rid of it and complete to Demas. His forward progress is going to be marked at the 25-yard line and a five-yard gain on the play. And if you think about it, it's so smart, isn't it? Now, it's right. time-consuming because you don't have as much individual time, but then offensive coaches can tell defensive coaches what they're seeing and vice versa, and you bounce things off each other, and it allows all the coaches, especially young coaches, to get a better grasp and understanding of what's going on. Yeah, great synergy. Second down, the pass complete to Mabry, the tight end from Buffalo. Another reception. Ian Okonkwo done a nice job catching the ball from the tight end spot. Tell you what, when Mabry first got on campus, the coaches to a man will tell you that he was ready to go the minute he walked into the athletic facility. And with those grad transfers, you get a lot of maturity, a lot of talent, a lot of experience. And a degree. Second and nine, heat coming. Jackson got rid of it in time and had to. Closest receiver was a Conquo. Don't think that, you know, Tyler Mabry didn't notice what Irv Smith did in this offense for Alabama. You know, I mean, when you, when you look at some of the pieces and the way they feature different guys, you can get a feel for what Mike Loxley's offense could present for you as a player. And he did as much as he could probably do at Buffalo, and right. he felt that he had a great opportunity to come here. And as you mentioned, from day one, has been an integral part of this offense and a nice player on their special teams unit. 
I hear you talk about it all the time. Dusty put some money on tape. Mm. <laughs> Never know about the future. Third down and nine. Complete down the seam to DJ Turner. And a first down for Maryland. They're going to go quick here with 124 to go. 30 yard pickup on the play. Another nice job by Josh Jackson staying in the pocket, finding his slot receiver working right up the seam. Fires a bullet for another first down. Maryland with a full complement of timeout still remaining. A little corner blitz. McFarlane made the catch. Break through a tackle. McFarlane giving them all that smoke inside the 10 yard line. Cisco finally pushing him out of bounds. A 38 yard game. But last week, Brian Ward liked the tackling. Andrew Armstrong doesn't bring enough. Arm tackles aren't going to work against Anthony McFarlane as he runs through arm tackles and runs past defenders. Another big gain for the sophomore running back. First down and goal. Man, they moved it downfield quickly. From the six. Jackson, touchdown McFarland. Faces in the fan, in the stands. McFarland with another touchdown. The extra point good, it's 42 to 13. This kind of feels like a statement, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Not just letting one. Syracuse, but college football know that the Mike Loxley regime is here yeah. in College Park. And this offense, it's not messing around. Man-to-man -man coverage. Antoine Cordy can't get over the top. An easy walk-in touchdown. Third of the day, third of the half for Anthony McFarlane, who's putting on a clinic. He broke that tackle on the previous run. That's an impressive drive chart. They've scored touchdowns on six of their seven possessions today. I'm not sure why Mike Loxley is sweating because <laughs> he should be chilling right now with what the score is telling us. And here's the problem for Syracuse. Wow. They're in throw situations and they've got an offensive line that is shown now in two games. They've struggled to protect. And so now if you're Maryland, I mean, you're chomping at the bit. You know what's coming as we get ready, whether it be at the end of the first half or going to the second half. They're going to be in pass rush situations, licking their chops. Guys, before the game, Josh Jackson, the Maryland quarterback, was joking that, hey, they might get 70 points again today. Well, they're already past halfway there. And this just in, this is the most points scored in back-to-back -back first halves in Maryland history. Uh, you talk about the efficiency of the passing game this year as compared to last year. Jackson approaching 300 yards already. Well, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Moss Student Section of the Year. The Maryland Terrapin Student Section is already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. First and 10 from the 35 from you would think a somewhat demoralized Syracuse team right now. DeVito with some backside heat coming completes the pass to Christian Jackson. And Jackson pushed out of bounds short of the 40. 36 seconds to go. Clock running. Picked up three. O'Neal between the tackles. Got about four on the play. Third down coming up. That might be the last play of a cataclysmic first half for the Orange, who came into this afternoon 
with some high hopes and expectations. That's the end of the first half. They won't get the playoff. A lugubrious look etched across the countenance of Syracuse fans and their head coach, Dino Babers. Big first half for Mike Loxley here at home at the end of the first half. College Park score 42-13. Right now we send you back to Matt Berry in the studio. <laughs> Guys, thank you. Time now for the Lexus Halftime Report. Let's begin our week two of Saturday in college football. Ohio State and Cincinnati first quarter. Jesse, Justin Fields pick it up where he left Justin off. Justin Fields looked real good last week against FAU. Five total touchdowns in that game, and I love the decision right here. Nobody open downfield. Go get it yourself, big fella. Second quarter, Cincinnati still down 7 nothing. We got a little special teams play. Buckeyes blocked the field goal, and then it really started to become the J.K. Dobbins show. This a four-yarder. Joey, great first half for Dobbins. Yeah, they have this Cincinnati defense off balance. They can't handle him up front. J.K. Dobbins already over 120 yards rushing. This is his second touchdown. And as you can see, the Cincinnati defense is just looking like they're worn out already in the second quarter. 60-yarder for Dobbins. The longest career touchdown run for him. Jess Palmer, Joey Galloway, Matt Berry. Happy college football Saturday once again. Joey, we looked, or Jesse rather, we looked at the Bearcats saying maybe they could go into Columbus, not the case. Yeah, Ohio State looks really, really good, and I know Justin Fields is going to get a lot of the headlines here. I've been really impressed through these first, you know, week and a half. Welcome back, everyone, to College Park, and welcome back to the Big Ten on ESPN, presented by Xfinity. A look around campus here at University of Maryland. You know, anytime you see a lot of construction going on, it's usually a very good sign. Maryland... Got 99 problems right now, but points aren't won, Dusty. DeBerg. Offense is not won. <laughs> wow, this Mike Loxley offense, the 79 points scored a week ago was not an aberration. This yeah. offense is that good. 42 points in the first half. They were incredible. How about 397 yards of total offense? Eight and nine on third down. People thought, oh, it's Howard. It was a fluke. Not so fast. Seven possessions, six touchdown drives. It's been all Maryland so far. Here in College Park, Josh Jackson was unbelievably impressive. Anthony McFarlane with three touchdowns of his own. Everything that Scotty Montgomery, the offensive coordinator, and Michael Loxley, the head coach, are dialing up seems to be working. And they get the football to start the second half to boot. Unbelievable. Almost 400 yards of total yardage in the first half for the Terps. Keep in mind, DJ Turner. And a kick return touchdown last week. Let's go downstairs to Olivia. Olivia, what do you got? Well, as Syracuse starts on defense, Coach Babers started talking about the defense, and he said just a ton of missed tackles, a ton of missed communication in the secondary especially. Then I asked him about quarterback Tommy DeVito's two efficient scoring drives that he led, and he said, look, I think the Orange need to play better, not just one player. But there were some bright spots on DeVito. Well, they're going to need a lot from him, Olivia, here in the – Second half. They need to protect him. Yeah. Right. I mean, he's running for his life half the time. The one interception was ill-advised, but again, it started with with blown protection. So protect him. Give him a chance for success. Razor thin margin of error for the Orange in the second half. A good defensive play by Kendall Coleman up front. He is the voice of that Syracuse defense. We take a look at some of the first half storylines. A couple of turnovers by Syracuse and Maryland able to convert on those. Josh Jackson with six first half touchdown passes. McFarland got to the corner and picks up a first down at about the 36 yard line. Good block on the edge from Johnny Jordan. Number 73 the center. And then it's just a foot race to the perimeter. And that's one I'll take Anthony McFarlane 10 times out of 10. Just speed to the perimeter. Johnny Jordan just gets a piece of Alton Robinson. Nice pickup. Johnny Jordan making like a Dermati Dawson. A <laughs> getting downfield with that agility. There's a throwback name for you, Dusty. Lee. <laughs> making the backfield out of the backfield. That's Jake Funk. And Funk makes the reception. About five yards shy of the first down. Second and five coming up. 
Just underway here in the third quarter, opening drive for Maryland. A huge surprise, leading 42 to 13. False start. And, uh, start. 71. Number Dunkin. 71. Five yard penalty. Well, today we've got two huge games on ABC. Up first, Death Valley Showdown. Number 12, Texas A&M. Number one, Clemson. Then number six, LSU. Head to the 40 acres to face number nine, Texas. Coverage kicks off at 3.30 on ABC, streaming on the ESPN app. It's an interesting personnel package. Three running backs on the field right now for Maryland. Handoff. Leak. Eviscerates the defense, and he's gone. Leak. Touchdown, Maryland. Leak outrunning Andre Sisko, the safety into the end zone, showing great burst. And that 64 yard run by Leak ties a career long for him. And it's shaping up to be a, an afternoon of firsts for Maryland with 48 points on the board. Extra point good. Got an offsides here. Offsides. Defense number 23. The penalty's a climb. Point after is good. So we have a running back here, running back here, running back here. Okay, so now they have to adjust the defense. I want you to take a look at the safety that comes down, completely missed the tackle. And then it's off to the races for Javon Leak. You're not going to catch him in the open field. I love the creativity of the formation, the personnel grouping to make Syracuse adjust. There's only one safety in the open field. They get the numbers on their side. The safety doesn't make the play when he comes down, and it's off to the races for Javon Leak. You know, you got to love the enterprising nature of offensive coordinator Scotty Montgomery's offense. And he's got some pretty good lineage when you talk about the guys that he's worked with. There he is upstairs in the booth. He comes from Duke where he worked with head coach David Cutcliffe. He's also worked with Bruce Arians in the past. Some pretty inventive offensive minds. And uh, man, Dusty, we had this Maryland team last year. And mind you, the circumstances, the turmoil made it a different, different deal altogether. But right now on the field, offensively, this is as good as you could have imagined things could go. They've been incredible and that was one of the things Scotty Montgomery talked about with Loxley and, and what he's taught him about using different personnel package. He called it a plethora of ways to use different types of personnel. We saw it on display right there. Those two had a chance to spend a lot of time together before the players came in for fall camp. Fair catch called to the 14 yard line. Look at the former Broyles Trophy winner. Michael Loxley last year winning that award at the University of Alabama and uh, hiring Scotty Montgomery. It was interesting to hear Montgomery talk about the fact that he and head coach Loxley before the players showed up sat around every night and just chopped it up talking about football formations. It was it was like a coach's retreat amongst the two of them and exchanging ideas talking football philosophy and Sometimes you don't always hit it off when you're put together on a first year staff, but this I know it's just a short sample, but it's going pretty well. It's paying dividends, huh? There is Adams on the run. And Scotty Montgomery told us that Mike Loxley is very personnel focused and they had so much fun in this three weeks having like a crash course basically. They had to change some of the wording and they collabed some of their styles. But he speaks so highly of his head coach, saying he's as sharp as they come, and he still wants to learn. Well, right now his defense is doing a nice job. Sack on the play. 
Number 59, Keyron Howard, the first one to get you there. That's the third sack on DeVito today. Keyron Howard got those long arms, good coverage down the field. DeVito didn't really have anywhere to go with the football, and the pass rush gets home. Sets up third and long situation. Sounds familiar. Not where you want to be, where you the Syracuse offense. DeVito throws a strike complete at the 36 to Taj Harris making another reception. And that's going to be enough for a first down for the Orange. Picks up 10 on the play, keeps this drive alive. Just under 12 minutes to go. Syracuse touching the ball for the first time here in the second half. Offensive line picked up the pressure. On two back set now. Keeps some extra running backs in to help. DeVito out of the backfield completes it to Mo Neal. Couple nice moves by Neal and brought down about a yard short of that first down. It'll be second down and one. O'Neal had 89 yards rushing last week in that win at Liberty, including a 42 yard touchdown run. Off the fake, the pass complete, and Neal picks up the first down. Well, that big game next week looming large right now, and you wonder what it does, Dusty, for their psyche going into Clemson coming off a game like this. Well, I mean, listen, I think that this can't help anything, right? And especially right. when you watch the Clemson on the tape and their defensive line and what they're going to be able to present. So, I mean, I, I think clearly, um, you know, this game is going to be one with a lot of teaching to come from, and we know how good Clemson is. Nice pass and catch down the seam. Jackson on the move, still on his feet. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Syracuse. Tristan Jackson not giving up. And scores on the 52-yard connection. That was a bullet from Tommy DeVito. Fits it in there, tight coverage. Tristan Jackson's really shown up here today. Runs through the contact after the catch and finishes it off. As he hits pay dirt, second touchdown for the transfer wide receiver from Michigan State. Jackson, a guy whose family friends include a guy by the name of Braylon Edwards from the Michigan area. He used to play in the NFL and at the University of Michigan prior to that. A 52 yard career long touchdown reception. Syracuse fans have a whole lot to cheer about so far this afternoon. But they score on their opening drive of the third quarter. Let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Clemson A&M tonight on ABC. Big game coming up. It's going to be a good one in Death Valley. You know, we mentioned Syracuse only ranked team on the schedule is Clemson. How about Maryland with six ranked teams yeah. on their schedule? Mm. The way they're playing right now. That's a, that's a hard docket coming up. I think they're going to be. Uh, how surprised are you? Anybody? How surprised are you that Michigan and shocked. Army? I mean, really? I'm shocked. I just thought that with what Army wants to do, Michigan defensively is set up perfectly to defend them. And I didn't think Army would be able to get the stops against Michigan's offense. So much around Josh Gaddis and that offense right. with Shea Patterson, and it really sputtered here these first two weeks. Was it was it last year that Army gave Oklahoma a took them to overtime? Right. I just but, yeah. but the way Oklahoma's defense constructed a little different. I, I Michigan was well equipped to stop them, but what a statement that would be for Jeff Munkin if he'd go in the big house and get a win. Lee Davis in the backfield, brought down right across the 30-yard line. Nice gain of about six. Kenneth Ruff. Making the tackle for Syracuse. Dusty, we haven't heard a whole lot from Robinson and Coleman, the highly touted defensive ends for Syracuse. Why is that? Not much at all. Uh, they haven't been able to get pressure. And I think the fact that they can't get stops on third down has really worn down this Syracuse defense. 50 snaps in the first half as Maryland was 8 and 9 on third down. A little pressure on the edge. That pass incomplete. Trill Williams coming with that heat. Going to bring the corner here, brought a little pressure. Bootleg, excellent call, times it up well. Pressure runs right into the play, force a third and medium. Can Syracuse get a stop?
Jackson delivers incomplete in midfield. So the Orange defense gets the stop. The pass was intended for Okonkwo. Well defended by Trill Williams. Again, in on the play defensively. Coverage so. was good. Pressure was good coming in on Josh Jackson. I want you guys to take a look at what we've done here at ESPN. As you can see right here, I'll try to keep it as close as possible. Okay? That's for the tackle box to know when the quarterback gets outside the tackle box and when it's intentional grounding. And this one that I drew here, that's so that you know illegal downfield blocking. New little toy that we're playing with to help you, the viewer at home, understand when that quarterback gets outside the tackle box and when those offensive linemen on RPOs especially get too far down the field. Punt taken on the fly. That's Sean Riley into Maryland territory. So Syracuse, after a touchdown on its previous drive, trying to take that momentum back. Technology always evolving for the betterment of your viewing experience if you can't make it to the game of course put down the phone man <laughs>in my backyard down in Florida. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm in the swamp. Yeah, they got a lot of those different wildlife things. Terps with a comfortable lead. But Syracuse trying to make a move here. First down pass to Taj Harris. Scored a touchdown on their previous drive. And remember, tempo, a key element for the Syracuse offense. They led the nation a season ago in plays from scrimmage. First and ten, DeVito looking to fire, and the play blown up in a sack. Back to the 46-yard line by Keandre Jones. Well, they want to set up the screen, and it's a nice job by the Maryland defense to recognize it. And how about four? Is Keandre Jones having a ball game or what? Mm. Want to set the screen, coming back over to the side. It's well defended, didn't have time, and Jones gets home. Loss of 13, DeVito threads it into the 38-yard line, caught by Aaron Hackett. Last week, they had eight sacks against Howard. Half as many already today. Third and long for the Orange. DeVito, flag down on the field, oh. pass incomplete. John Riley was close. But there's a flag down at the 33. Offside. Defense number 27. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That's going to give him third down over again. Don't forget, coming up in just a few, Serena Williams looking for her record 24th major. Taking on Andreescu from Canada. Those two remember met up in Canada several weeks ago. Williams had to quit because of a back injury. So you're from Canada, but I know you're a big fan of Serena. Yeah, so yes. what, I mean, what, what's the deal? Oh, I'm Serena all okay, the way. Okay, just checking. I'm rooting for mom. Just checking. Yeah. She's big only 19 yeah. from Canada. Serena, 37 years old. Still rolling, though. Third and 10 here for Syracuse. Backside pressure, DeVito, a flag thrown. And DeVito forced out of bounds at about the 30. I think it's going to be a hold. Yeah, Ryan Alexander trying to hold off Bryce Brand on the play. Holding. Offense number 64. Ten-yard penalty, third down. Bryce Brand again with yep. pressure. These tackles, and that was one of the things I talked to you guys about with the, with the injury to Sam Heckel, the starting center last week, not playing today. Aaron Service, the typical starting left tackle, moves to center. 
right? So then the right tackle, Veterello, he's got to move to left. And Ryan Alexander, the South Alabama grad transfer, he's playing right. So this Maryland Terrapin defense, even though Shaq Smith's not playing, constant pressure all throughout the day. Vito with all day off his back foot. No shot there. Fourth down coming up. Taj Harris had about three defenders around him. So it started off as a very promising drive. Does, does Dino Babers think about going for it here? I mean, look at the score. They're down 29. Yeah, but you want to give Maryland the football in that spot? I mean, okay. you're looking at, I mean, you're looking at fourth down and 20. Yeah, just, just I think I'd it punt out there. The, yeah, I hear you. I, I think you got to punt the ball. Hope mm. your defense can come up with a stop. Try to pin them deep inside their own territory and get a stop. So a lot of football left to be played. Going for your, on the 42-yard line on the fourth and 20, that's, yeah. that's desperation. I don't know if you're quite there yet. D.J. Turner back at his own eight-yard line for this punt from Hoffrichter. And good special teams work by the Orange. A 37-yard punt, first and 10 from there. Let's go back to the studio. Guys, Army was on the doorstep of going up 21-7 against Michigan. And then Kelvin Hopkins Jr. picked by Lavert Hill. And this was big because Michigan now driving, still down seven in the third. How big a year is this for the Wolverines in the Big Ten? I think it's huge. Yeah. They've yet to make it to a Big Ten championship. Right. I right. mean, under we Harbaugh. We under Harbaugh, we focus so much on, you know, can they beat Ohio State? Can they deal with Michigan State? They struggled last week and struggling mildly right here at home against Army. Yeah. You drop that one, it be a long year up in Ann Arbor with going into the season, high, high expectations. Fleet Davis in the backfield runs over the left side of that offensive line. And, you know, back to that Army Michigan, it's always a. I always find it interesting. Last week it was what Georgia State went into Tennessee on a guarantee, quote unquote, game, a yeah. guarantee game. And you get the bag and you get the win, Dusty. I mean, that's a heck of a weekend when a school can go in and get those two things accomplished. That was incredible. <laughs> what a performance by Georgia State. Two wins the season before. Yeah. Going to Knoxville and get a victory. And as you said, go home with a nice change in their pocket. Yeah, run to the bank. Here he is again, Fleet Davis. Picks up a couple of yards. Hey, Monday Night Football back with a double dip. Drew Brees and the Saints hosting Deshaun Watson and the Texans. And then the oft-talked-about Raiders taking on the Broncos. Coverage kicks off at 5 o'clock Eastern time with Monday Night Countdown. And uh, I, I feel like the Raiders have they've had three seasons worth of drama in the last 72 hours. The Antonio Brown saga, yeah. I, I've never seen anything quite like it. Third down and six. Pass complete to Demas. Just beyond the 15-yard line. That's going to be enough for a first down, a seven-yard gain. Dusty, take me inside the locker room. What happens when one of your teammates goes astray like an Antonio Brown? Just a unique circumstance. The guys left behind, what do they say amongst themselves? I don't know if anybody can really know because have we seen anything quite like this? Yeah. I, I know this much. I would want him as far away from that locker room as possible. Yeah. If I'm a coach, if I'm a general manager, if I'm a leader of that locker room, that's cancerous. You don't right. want that anywhere near. No one denies the talent. It's off the charts. But the baggage that comes with it, uh, you want to get, you want to distance yourself yeah. as far as possible. Interesting. Pass incomplete. Intended for Daryl Jones. You got so many bodies inside, of, you know, what, even at the college level, you got 80 guys in the locker room and everybody's got to be accountable. And you can't just act however you want. Yeah. You know, I mean, again, we don't have to go down the laundry list of things that Antonio's brought. Going back to last year, quitting on his team in week 17 yeah. when they still had a chance to make the postseason. I mean, unfortunately, you'd like to say you could have seen this coming, but to the extent that it's gone, I don't yeah. know if anybody could have realistically seen it come like this. It's that Monday night football game all the more intriguing. Nowhere to go that time for Fleet Davis trying the left side. Kenneth Ruff making the tackle and third down coming up for Maryland. 
Michael Loxley said something interesting to Olivia at the end of the half in the interview that we don't watch the scoreboard. They've been a little bit uh, 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 impotent here offensively in the third quarter. Haven't done a whole lot. Trying to run the football. I mean, we, we, see, we saw the big run by Javon Leak to start the second half. Have gone a little bit conservative. And take the foot off the gas. Into traffic. And picked off by Andre Sisko. One of the top DBs interception-wise a season ago. Does it again. Had eight last year and picks up another one here. When I think that might be why you want to go conservative, right? Andre Sisko, seven picks last year, his second already on the season. Comes out of nowhere, reads the quarterback's eyes, wow. and makes an athletic, huge interception for this Syracuse football team, giving them the ball inside the 30. Just a three-man rush. They dropped eight in the coverage. And Josh Jackson makes his first mistake of the day, trying to fit it in there to DJ Turner. And it's Andre Sisko with a huge play. Let's see if DeVito takes a shot right after the interception. Pass incomplete. No flag on the play intended for Sean Riley. What went wrong here? Let's take a look here. Try to find Sisko and see where he's coming from. Looks like he's at the very top of your screen. Freeze it for me, guys. Watch him break on the ball. Watch him see the quarterback's eyes. Watch the pass delivered. Anticipates the route. Breaks on the football like he's done so many times in his short career. That's a big time play by Cisco. A player who. Uh, ball start offense. Number 57, five yard penalty. Second down. Cisco didn't receive his first college football offer until October of his senior year in high school. It was then just a two star prospect, but uh, I'll tell you what, he's gone up against some four and five star guys who he's done a great job against. Brian Ward says he's a poster child for who they are at Syracuse. Continues to work. He's just been an outstanding player. That's Mo Neal. And Mo Neal picked up about four on the play. A little extracurricular activity upfield. Approaching five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Syracuse with a little bit of an opportunity here after the interception. Third down. They've got to get down to the 16. His receiver fell on the route. He might have been tripped up at about the 15-yard line. His receiver, Taj Harris, is complaining that he was tripped up by the defender. But it's going to be fourth down, and DeVito still on the field. And by the way, Jonesy, that's why you don't go for it on fourth down earlier. Trip Take a look and see. Nah, I mean, that's, that's just incidental contact. Yeah, that's a good no call. Huge play right here for Syracuse. DeVito still alive. Plants and fires and incomplete. Over the head of Mo Neal. And Maryland will take over on downs. Terrapins up 29 points. I've seen a couple players pointing up at the sky. You know who they're playing for. There's Jordan McNair. And you can see after their 79-point win, some of the tweets from those players. Coach Locke said we honor him with how we practice, how we prepare, and how we play. The defense was masterful here to stop Syracuse, right? They turn the ball over, but they get a stop. The blitzer comes clean off the edge, and then everybody man-to-man -man coverage down the field. Nowhere for Tommy DeVito to go with the football. Great coverage. I mean, it's outstanding coverage. Everybody's blanketed. Nowhere to go with the ball. DeVito's trying to find anybody to break open. Nobody can come clean. He continues to work, goes out of real estate, throws up a prayer, but nowhere to be found. Coach Hoke's defense has really stepped up big here today. Carlin between the tackles, breaking a couple of potential stops and finally brought down at about the 24-yard line by Andrew Armstrong and Trill Williams. There's a look at Coach Hoka's defense doing a really nice job here this afternoon. We have a player shaken up down in the field at about the 28-yard line. That's Marcus Minor. Minor, the starting right tackle for Maryland. And 
otherwise Maryland has stayed pretty healthy here this afternoon. Well folks this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities all state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you all state. Maryland missing one of its top receivers this year too mm -hmm. because of an AL, ACL injury. Deshaun Jones yes. last year a lot of people remember he had the breakout game and a huge win against Texas had yeah. three touchdowns three different ways lost him early in camp to an ACL. We have a, a early motion there by Alton Robinson. Offside, defense number 94 five yard penalty first down. Matt Berry what's good. Correction third down. All right, checking in on Michigan and Army Shea Patterson. Remember, after turnover, Army about to take a 21-7 lead. Michigan takes advantage. Patterson to Ronnie Bell keeps the chains moving. And then Zach Charbonne, a first career touchdown earlier in the game. This is second. Right now we're tied into the third, 14-all. Michigan in a battle. And the blitz coming by Syracuse. And Great discernment by quarterback Josh Jackson to Tyler Mabry. Mabry with sure hands on that catch, Dusty. Goes down. No problem going down, catching that football with his hands. Strong hands. It completes the process of the catch. Here's what you mean by good hands, huh? Oh, actually, and good I don't replays. Know about that. <laughs> and good yeah. replays. They pick it up. That ball looks like it touched the ground. Seven yard gain on the play. Jake Funk straight ahead. Under two and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter of play. You know, back to that Michigan game, tied 14-14. I want to think about when I think about Michigan. I just want to go here real quick. If I'm a college football player in my next life, I want to go to Michigan. Didn't Jim Harbaugh take them to Rome or somewhere real exotic this summer? He, they've been all they kinds of places. They went to Italy. They, they, they travel well. You guys ever take a field trip like that in no, Oklahoma? No, we were too busy working winning games. You went to Stillwater. <laughs> Jake Funk on the carry. Armstrong making the tackle. You didn't go overseas? You guys didn't have any of those trips? No, we were working, getting ready to win conference championships. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's where you got that ring you were wearing the other day, huh? <laughs> They've been yeah. all over. Yeah, Michigan's gone to Africa. Third down and eight. One and a half to go here in the third quarter. Maryland in no hurry at all at this point. Milking that clock for all it's worth. Jackson got rid of it. They're going to rule it complete. Back at the line of scrimmage, Jake Funk made a really nice adjustment on the ball, but short of the first down. It'll be fourth. Robinson there. With good pressure on quarterback Jackson. Alton Robertson with a Alton Robinson with a inside move, a little twist stun. He comes through the middle of the defense. Haven't seen him getting much pressure on the yeah. quarterback today. The Maryland offensive line has really done a solid job, both run blocking, protecting Josh Jackson. Not coming in here, the Syracuse defense. I thought the defensive line would have had a big advantage. It's been advantage Maryland offensive line. Spangler. Punting in his own 27 yard line. Fair catch called on the play by Sean Riley. First and 10 from there. After the 32 yard punt, let's take a look at this blimp worthy play brought to you by Goodyear. And many of them today by Anthony McFarland. Oh, he's made all kinds of plays. I mean, he's shown really everything in the arsenal. He's shown the ability to break tackles, catch the football, the backfield, the speed, the power. We showed you this earlier. 500 pounds, Dusty. That's some power in those legs. Local product from DeMatha High School, one of what, 13 players on this Maryland roster from that esteemed high school. Pass complete to the wing, to the edge, Taj Harris. They get a catch and run right at the first down marker at the 40 yard line. We're going to move the chains. First down and 10. 17 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Farland got a lot of uh, high school teammates on the squad with him. 
free play. Right. Back to McFarland in the Matha High School. Morgan Wooten, the basketball Full coach. Start there. offense, number 63. Five yard penalty. First down. For so many years, you know, I was asking some of the Maryland players from DeMatha, so that's a basketball school, isn't it? They kind of smiled at me and looked and said, nah, it's football too. Yeah, DJ Turner didn't like that no, when you said that yesterday. <laughs> he wasn't feeling me, was he? No, he was not. <laughs> 15 minutes to go. Dino Babers with four fingers to the sky. Meanwhile, Maryland pumping up the volume, pulling the whistle. <laughs> Xfinity XFi, you can stream live games from any corner of the house. You're watching college football on ESPN. Here from College Park, Maryland, presented by Xfinity. Great day and a great Saturday afternoon for a college football game. Not so great for quarterback Tommy DeVito today. Although he completes that pass out to the 39 yard line to Sean Riley. Picks up four on the play. Just in the way here in the fourth quarter. Mark Jones, Dusty Dvorak, Olivia Decker down on the sidelines for Dino Babers and his Syracuse Orange squad. It has been a rough afternoon. They have trailed the entire game. But it's been a combination of things this Maryland defense. A lot of pressure on Tommy DeVito. He's been having to get outside the pocket. And an excellent job staying with the coverage down the field all throughout the afternoon. It's been tough sledding for Tommy DeVito finding open targets. O'Neal motioned out of the backfield. DeVito completes the pass. And a spirited run that time by Taj Harris. Brought down by Marcus Lewis. And when you talk about the ACC in the preseason poll, Syracuse coming off of a 10-win season has a lot of high expectations expectations welcomed by head coach Dino Babers that run picking up a first down by Neal and there's a look at uh, Clemson and Syracuse favored in the Atlantic by Virginia Miami over on the coastal side of the ledger and Florida State getting upended at home last week mm. Boise State with a 18 point comeback and rally to win that game 31 13 they don't score in the second half Pass complete to Nikeem Johnson. Tough start to the year for Willie Tagger. Yeah. Kind of seemed like they'd have a bounce back year after not making a bowl game. Not the way they were looking to get things off on the right foot last week. How's it going tonight? North Carolina hosting Miami, the yeah. U. Yeah. Hey, congratulations to our former colleague, Mac Brown. Absolutely. What a win that was. Yeah. This is Mo Neal up the middle, picks up three yards. And while we're speaking of former colleagues and coaches, present coaches, want to send our prayers and thoughts, best of them, out to our former colleague here at ESPN, Bob Davey, head football coach at New Mexico, uh, who underwent a medical incident last week on the sidelines. And Bob is uh, getting ready to do his perfect push ups. And, Get back on the sidelines and do his thing. This is Mo Neal on the catch. Ends up about three yards shy of the first down. Fourth down coming up. Like the decision by Tommy DeVito. Just take what you can get. Mo Neal working on a linebacker. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Pick up a decent chunk of that to make it fourth and manageable. snap for DeVito and nowhere to go nobody to throw it to and Maryland will take over on down no answers offensively on that play I mean DeVito looked and you could tell nobody was home nobody was open zero options he wanted to go to one Sean Riley out of the slot, and it was outstanding man-to-man -man coverage by Nick Cross. John Hope, the defense for Maryland, it's been lights out, and the Maryland offense, it's been even better. There's a new culture in College Station. Trevor Lawrence looks like a generational talent. We're back. We fight like Tigers.
Back to the action first down and 10 Maryland broken up nicely. Good break on the ball by Eric Coley from the safety spot. It'll be second down and 10. Syracuse fans that have made the trip here looking for something more to cheer about here with 12 minutes and 15 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Lee Davis in the backfield second and 10. Jackson got hit fires incomplete intended for Jones it'll be third down and long and Jackson getting up rather slowly. Lakeem Williams linebacker coming off the edge they bring him in pressure. It's a big hit on the quarterback Josh Jackson. Ooh. They want to take a look at that. That was You're close to being up too high. Josh Jackson big body quarterback gets up slowly but seems to be OK. Look at the grad transfer from Virginia Tech. Really playing a bunch of big games hands it off to Tavon Fleet. Who picks up the first down at the 48 yard line Fleet Davis Fleet of foot. It's Terrence Davis with a key block getting up to the second level. Watch my big the big man here going to get up and get a nice block on the linebacker. He's going to come around gets that key block on Lakeem Williams and enough for a first down. Terrence Williams six starts last year started both these games this year this offensive line has been impressive today. Lee Davis again trying the left side got a crease and finally pushed out of bounds at about the 26 yard line by Eric Coley a 21 yard gain on the play. Well if it ain't broke don't fix it right let's watch him again. Terrence Davis going to get up to the second level and keep working. They're going to run right off of him. Gets a nice block on Josh Black, the defensive tackle. Big hole off the left side. 317 pounds. Terrence Davis, another one of those players from the local area from Temple Hills, Maryland. Talked about the DMV area and recruiting from Maryland. Hey, it's important for Syracuse, too. They recruit this area heavily as well. Fleet Davis eating up more yards on the ground and clock under 11 minutes to go got eight on that carry. What's the old saying if it's not broke don't fix it. Yeah. Keep coming back to it. Yep. Pull Terrence Davis around again also on the left side got to point out Sean Christie number 70 really had an outstanding career. He got given a six year of eligibility this year making his 25th consecutive start. Johnny Jordan there 73 the center. Interior of that offensive line, they've been impressive. Second and two. And Fleet Davis, it's going to be interesting to see where they spot the football. Looked like his forward progress was enough for the first down. Well, start your NFL Sunday with the countdown crew as Odell Beckham Jr. and the New Look Browns make their debut. We go one on one with Baker Mayfield. Sunday at 10 a.m. On ESPN streaming live on the ESPN app. What do you expect of the former Sooner quarterback this year for the Browns? I think he's going to have a big year. I like yeah. those targets Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham. I like the offense. The offensive line worries me a little bit. Right. I'm really, I, I can't wait to watch that defense. Miles Garrett, they went and got Olivier yeah. Vernon. I think that defense got a chance to be pretty good as well. First down and 10. Wayne <laughs> Davis. Down inside the 10. Did I see Miles Garrett in the uh, ESPN body issue? I think I did. Along with Chris Paul and some other very prominent athletes. Yeah, I think so. Miles Garrett's a freak now. I think he's prime. To me, he's a he's maybe a dark horse, maybe not so dark horse, but I think he's gonna be in the running for defensive player of the year. Got a counterpart on the opposite side, like I mentioned, Olivier yeah. Vernon. And He's been impressive. Yeah. When are you going to get in that ESPN The Body magazine? They, they haven't asked yet, man. They I'm, should, I'm, man. I, you, you keep it tight, You know, man. It, it was kind of lonely in the gym this weekend, you and Olivia. I didn't see you guys in there. Now you're lying to me. <laughs> Lee Davis <laughs> straight ahead down to the five-yard line. He's been in the weight room. Fleet Davis as well as Javon Leak, and we saw McFarland a little bit earlier squatting 500 pounds. Uh, 
yeah, you know, I, I got my run in. I was on the treadmill, punched out three and a half quick miles. I kept looking over my shoulder for you and Olivia. I didn't a treadmill. See either of them. I even hit the row, man. Oh, okay. Hit some rows, little push up sit ups. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. <laughs> These suits are too expensive for if we got out, out of shape, right? That's right, absolutely. Okay. No question. <laughs> First down and goal. Maryland dressed for success right now, leading by 29. Blake Davis, touchdown! Left side of that offensive line again, Sean Christie. Nice block, Jalen Duncan, 71. That is a demoralizing drive if you're a defender. They just lined up and ran it right down their throat, play after play after play, to put an exclamation point on what's been a fantastic afternoon, afternoon for this Maryland offense. I'll tell you what, I know Maryland's got a tough schedule this year in the Big Ten, but man, if they can line up, and play the way they've done it today. Who knows? ESPN College Football is presented by Xfinity. Get the ultimate in-home Wi-Fi experience with Xfinity XFi. You know, the College Park Airport here is the oldest continuously operating airport. That's right, in the entire United States. Started in 1909. And, you know, if you want to fly, if you're a student in Syracuse, get here anywhere between $250 and $500. You want to take the train, hey, $160. First class cabin, maybe $500. The bus, between $90 and $200. Car, between $60 and $120. And to be an Orange fan, it, it's been tough. The emotional toll, you really can't calculate what's happened here price-wise to Orange fans that have done either of those trips. Oh, Riley on the return. Olivia, I know you got somebody Someone down there that made the trip. What was it like for them by car? Well, let me just also <laughs> say they're sticking it out, and they are in the sun, you guys. The Maryland side's in the shade, but it's not so gloryful over here, right? So I'm with the Gozi. Points. Was it worth the drive? I, I actually live in Maryland, but my brothers and my, my brother-in-law, my son-in-law came down from Syracuse today. And you guys fit seven people in the car? Nine oh, hours, the nine hours in an air-conditioned okay. car, and just to see Syracuse play today. Yeah. Not to see them win. I wish they showed up today too, baby. Come on, let's go Orange! They're still having a lot of fun out here. Hey, you believe in the Orange? We love you. We, we you believe in the Orange? orange. We believe yes, orange. yes. yes. From the Gozy brothers, they spent a lot of time in the car together to get here, guys. Back to you. Hey, Olivia. <laughs> Olivia, anyone that drives nine hours to come and see their football team play on the road, that's, that's big time. That's passion. That's loyalty that goes a long, long way. I know if Matt Berry would probably make that drive, too, in the studio, wouldn't you, Matt? Oh, yeah, I'll drive anywhere to see a good football game. And right now, that would mean me driving to Ann Arbor. We're on fourth down. The Army defense comes up big. Michigan has the ball again. Army just punts, and we're tied at 14s in the fourth quarter. All right, Matt. 7.39 to go. Syracuse looking at third and six. Good run by Abdul Adams. This game a little bit of a homecoming for Abdul Adams, a former top 10 high school running back. A transfer from your alma mater, Dusty, Oklahoma. And uh, actually broke his scapula in the spring, missed a little bit of time, but bounced back and playing some good football right now. 13-yard gain for him. Vito complete at midfield. And a first down for Syracuse. Catch made by Jackson. 11-yard gain. Coca-Cola invites you to share a Coke while tuning into ABC tonight. Number six, LSU, taking on number nine, Texas. I'm a Coke Zero guy, you know, watching him carbs. You and me both. That's a nice route right there by Tristan Jackson. Coming back, working back to his quarterback to get the first down. Another completion by DeVito. This one to... 
Taj Harris down to the 30 yard line. 640 to go. Anything I think at this point you can help to build the confidence of the quarterback mm -hmm. Tommy DeVito. I think it's quality reps. Yeah, because they missed out on a lot of reps because of some of the injuries to That's exactly various right. wide receivers during camp. Alua Timmy, the player shaken up down in the field. With 6.39 to go here in College Park. The Terps in control when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to College Park, Maryland. Help people affected by Hurricane Dorian. Donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Go to redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate now. And as a neighbor of the Bahamians, I'm down in South Florida. Some of the scenes out of the Abacos and uh, Grand Bahama, NASA have been heart-wrenching. Let's just uh, pray that, ask for the divine to restore that island and pray for the residents. Up the middle, nice run by Abdul Adams. Here's a look at Maryland's schedule. Are you ready to call them a sleeper in the Big Ten after this kind of performance? They seem pretty woke to me. I don't know if yeah. they're sleeping. Uh, okay. Everybody needs to pay attention. I, I mean, this team, we'll see. The November is very tough, but when you look at that schedule, um, if we can pop it back up, you know, I think there's a lot of winnable games between now and November. Uh, and who knows? Based off, the, based off the way Michigan's playing, that game's going to be right here. Sure. I mean, I think this Maryland Terrapins team is for real. They have a quarterback now. They got a lot of talent on offense. Mike Loxley, as long as their offensive coordinator, Scotty Montgomery, calling the shots. And this defense is playing uh, for Coach John Hoke. So, I mean, yeah. hey. They've got my attention, yeah. and it won't shock me if they get some consideration for the top 25 this week. They're already thinking about beating Penn State. Pass up top incomplete intended for Tristan Jackson, and a flag thrown on the play in the end zone. Tristan Jackson, speaking of making it, you know, stepping up and impressing yeah. some people, he's been outstanding today. Holding defense number 22, 10 yard penalty, first down. Okay. Getting held as he goes up and tries to bring it in with one hand, but. That's the proper call by the official. Yeah, he's had seven receptions today, Dusty, for 157 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Beats the coverage down the field. The defender, Kenny Bennett, gets his hand in there too early, draws a flag. You know, you mentioned it earlier, but Tristan Jackson, Taj Harris, also Nikeem Johnson all missed quite a bit of camp with various injuries. And yeah. the timing between them and Tommy DeVito just haven't quite been in sync so far early on the season. First and 10 from the 13. DeVito complete. A little bubble screen to Nikeem Johnson. Johnson, another one of those guys you alluded to, missed a little bit of time in training camp. Had three receptions last week in that win at Liberty. Five yard gain on the play. Four receivers in on the formation. They're going to run it. DeVito, a little option pass, and Nikeem Johnson stepped out of bounds. Didn't know quite where he was. So third down coming up. Look like an old school option right yeah. there, Jonesy. Kind of flipped it out there to his receiver who was standing out of bounds. You talk old school, you talk Syracuse. You got to bring up Jim Brown and Floyd Little. Great football lineage at that school. Not about history, it's about the present right now. Larry Zonka. Larry Zonka, I was about him. to say. You gotta throw him in there. How could you leave a Miami Dolphin I off know, the list? I know. Ruling on the field as receiver caught the pass, went out of bounds. The clock will start on my ready. I was going to say initially they ruled it incomplete, but I thought he caught it inbounds, and as soon as he caught it, took a step out. Officials come together and get it right. Third and five. Two running backs. They hand it off to Abdul Adams. Nowhere to go. Fourth down coming up for Syracuse. 
that Maryland defense has been largely impregnable and these pictures kind of sum up the day for Syracuse fans been really impressed with this Maryland defense we've seen pressure Keandre Jones has had himself a ball game linebackers Isaiah Davis Yinde Ely flying around Antoine Brooks safety for them such a physical instinctive player DeVito looking for someone to throw it to into the end zone incomplete no flag on the play intended once again for Tristan Jackson Four oh four to go and Michael Loxley's team will get the football back and inside a coach Loxley's office the jerseys of Jordan Martin and Len Bias and poignant memories and welcome back everyone to Maryland Stadium Capital One Field Mark Jones chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak and Olivia Decker down on the sidelines on a very impressive and dominant afternoon by Maryland. And they got a little bit more for you. Jake Funk bringing the funk. All the way down to the 37 yard line. And the beat doesn't stop for the Terps. Well, the good blocking up front continues for this Maryland Terrapins team. Going to be on the left side. Let's take a look here as they're going to just pave away huge hole as he's going to run through and run to daylight. It's been from the onset of this game. They've set the tone and the tempo up front, winning the line of scrimmage and running the football in this second half, what seems like at will against the Syracuse defense. 79th play of the game from Maryland totaling 614 yards of offense but once again that number 79 and funk Jake Eric Coley finally pushed him out of bounds a 27 yard chunk of real estate same thing I mean same exact play big hole off the left side it's 68 Ellis McKinney a guy who they said can play all spots we've seen him at tackle we've seen him at guard continuing to pave big holes for whichever of these Maryland running backs yeah. gets the football I mean we've seen Anthony McFarlane with big runs Javon Leak with big runs it was Tayon Fleet Davis the last drive yeah. and here Jake Funk everybody getting on the action today big room in a quarterback hands it off to Funk again Getting funky with it. Touchdown. In three plays, Maryland scores. All right, let's watch these big men work, okay? Watch these guys go to work here. I mean, the double teams are hard. 52 gets the seal, 68 up to the second level. And I'll be honest with you, it kind of feels like the Syracuse defense has quit. Mm. And you know who hasn't quit? The Maryland offense yeah. and this offensive line. They're going to keep rolling. And anytime the ball is snapped, they're going to give it everything they got. 79 points last week, 63 right now with 224 to go. I don't think anybody saw this one coming. Syracuse defensive coordinator Brian Ward there a moment ago. A little disconsolate, you would think, on the sidelines. And a disappointing afternoon for Syracuse. They'll have to regroup and then bounce back, get ready for Clemson next week. Well, tonight after Stanford USC at Sports Center with Stan Verrett and Zubin Mahenti, they'll have a full breakdown of Antonio Brown and the Raiders. That's a lot of breaking to do. Serena Williams quest for a history making 24th major and Herbie has the reactions and analysis of LSU and Texas Stanford USC I'm intrigued with that game Maybe we get Stanford a good look at them next week against in uh, Orlando yeah. Central Florida backups KJ Costello hey man did you see that hit on KJ Costello last week yes I, to me that should have been I mean I know they got rough in the past yeah. that should have been an ejection yeah 
I mean, took it to the head. I thought it was egregious, yeah. Delivers a concussion, and he misses that game. He's out this game. That's a big blow to that Stanford offense. Yeah. And then JT Daniels tears his knee up. He's out for the season. Should be a good game out in L.A. today. Going to be interesting to see how the Pac-12 develops this year. I really think, and I'm high on the Pac-12 this year. I think they're going to get a team into the college football playoff scenario. They were shut out last year. Down to the 32. With 221 to go, that was Aaron Hackett on the kickoff return. Look, it's been a rough day for Syracuse, but I love this right here. This is a senior offensive lineman, Evan Adams, hugging his quarterback, Tommy DeVito, who looks to strut on the sidelines. That's team, right? That's brother, that's brotherhood. That's, that, that's your teammate. And that's even understanding it's been a long, rough day. It's going to be all right. We still got a long way to go this season. It's going to be an interesting week of practice as they prepare. Yeah. You, you try to swallow this pill of a bludgeoning here against a Maryland team and get yourself ready for Clemson next week. But things like that are signs that potentially can get it back on track. Clayton Welch, Dusty, in a quarterback now for Syracuse. Jarvion Howard on the carry with nowhere to go, approaching two minutes left here in the game. And Maryland will improve to 2-0 and on the season. Some impressive offense from a stable of running backs. Anthony McFarland, Javon Leak, Fleet Davis, Jake Funk to finish things off. The touchdown a moment ago. Syracuse will play an all-important conference game next week against Clemson. A great chance for redemption for them. So many wonderful things happening at that school under athletic director John Wildhack doing a fantastic job. Howard again with the run, picking up about two on the play. One and a half to go. And I, and I agree, just to echo your sentiments. You know, John Wildhack has done a great job. I thought retaining Dino Babers after the 10 win season, not allowing him to, that's to go win. somewhere else, that's yeah. a huge win. Yeah. And I do think, though this game doesn't necessarily show it, this program is headed in the right direction. A, uh, a rare battle between a couple of African American coaches on the respective sidelines, head coaches. Michael Roxley from this area, Dino Babers from the West Coast. Incomplete. Got a question for you. Hit me. Uh, since we are in Maryland, right? Do you know the state sport of the state of Maryland? I I don't. I don't. Jousting. Come on, Come on look no, at it, man. It's a state sport. No way. Maryland became the first state to adopt a state sport June 1st, 1962. Jousting, Jousting tournaments have been held in Maryland since colonial times became increasingly popular no after way. the Civil War. No, that's, that, that's fake, man. Come on. You're not going to get me with that. I'm being honest. I'm not going for the pump fake, Dusty. No way. Jousting. I've, no, I've never walked around the park here in Maryland and see guys jousting at the park. <laughs> well, there is two things that Maryland does. What's that? Crab cakes and football. That I know. That Crab I know. cakes and football. That I know. That's what Maryland does. I don't know about jousting, man. Jousting, too, by the way. Yeah. They okay. left that out in wedding crashes. Well, I'm going to see how the jousting team is doing here at Maryland. See if I. How's your jousting Get me a jousting scholarship. First down and 10 with 48 seconds to go. What about uh, that great movie when Jimmy met Sally? Tell me about it because I well, don't remember Jimmy's that. Jimmy's a male crab and right. Sally's a female crab. <laughs> okay. At the very least, you're going to get educated this year. Yeah, I, hey, listen, me. man. I've eaten some of their relatives at some point. I like crab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> crab cakes, too. <laughs> 48 seconds to go. In all seriousness, no. What, what a start. To the tenure yeah. for Mike Loxley. I mean, when you go back to whenever he was at New Mexico, times yeah. that he would easily like to forget. But you look at going the path that he's been down and being with Nick Saban the last three years, you know, getting a glimpse, a look at the process and what it took to, for Alabama to build what they built. And he's trying to not recreate what Saban did, but take some pieces of that. And his first two games here, 79-0 and 63-20, man. Yeah. If I'm a Maryland Terrapin fan, I am excited about what the future potentially holds with Mike Loxley running this program. And you can officially deem them a 
sleeper in the Big Ten the way that they played today. Olivia, who's with Coach Loxley. Congratulations, Olivia. your first win over a top 25 team as a head coach. How did your team do this today? You know, it's, I, I'm glad and I'm happy for our team. Uh, it's always a team effort. I would have liked us to not be as sloppy in the third quarter, but I thought we challenged our guys to finish the game the right way. You know, our goal is to win the fourth quarter, and I felt good about us winning the fourth quarter. A quick question for you. Our guys were all wondering, what does this mean? We saw all your guys do it. Fourth quarter. We want to pump it up in the fourth quarter, give it a little extra juice, a little extra energy. That's what it's all about. What's fueling this offense? Uh, the players. It's all about the players and their execution. You know, these guys have bought in everything we've asked them to do, and on the offensive side of the ball, we've got some pretty good players. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Olivia. The victorious head coach, Michael Loxley, under the stewardship of his quarterback, Josh Jackson, doing a Fantastic job early and often getting his team on the right track. Jumped down to a 14-0 lead and never trails. The final score, 63-20. to Yeah, they pumped it up even before the fourth quarter. For Dusty and Olivia, lots of pats on the back for the Terps. I'm Mark Jones. Right now we send you back to Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, and Jesse Palmer. Guys. Gentlemen, thank you. Quite a look from Maryland.